potentially two different paths. One, portability, remaining simple and easy to use for newcomers, because we want to keep bringing newcomers into the hobby, right? We don't want to lose those, and we want to keep sort of supporting that level. But we're very, very aware that there is a level here, for example, that would want advanced, uh, you know, larger equipment, equatorial mode, mosaics, for example. So we're working on those behind the scenes. You'll see more from C-Star over the next year or so. There will be more products coming. There will be more developments. The software since last NEF has not stopped. We've been working on this constantly. So uh, you will definitely see more of those. So we'll be aiming both at the beginner and more portability, but also for the advanced images. So keep watching. Keep watching the Facebook pages. You'll see news as soon as we have it. But you can be assured, stuff is coming. So last NEF, we also re announced this camera, which is the ASI uh, sorry the ASI 2600 MC Duo. So what we're trying to do here is to integrate the guide chip as well as the main imaging chip. Onto the, same, uh, onto the same sensor axes. There are some benefits to this. One is it's actually connected internally. So you don't need a guide scope. You don't need an off axis guider. You don't need any cabling. It's all integrated internally on the hub. And um, this has been very, very successful. I've been testing this version uh, down in New Zealand since last NEF and I absolutely love this. This is probably my main camera now that I use. And um, there are some other benefits as well. I'll take, I'll take the question at the end. Um, there are some benefits for this as well, in that um, the on-axis guider tends to be slightly more accurate than an off-axis guider. So that's my experience. Um, this neat and compact, there is a little, uh, little focus knob here. You basically um, connect this to your telescope, focus the main camera, and then you can tweak that little silver knob to bring the guide scope into, uh, into focus as well and um, just connect the USB to your PC or your ASI Air and you'll see both of these devices appear as two devices, one the main 2600 sensor and one is the guide chip. Now, when we were here last and we announced this, straight away on the first day, it was like, oh, where's the mono version? It's here, okay. So you can now order a 2600 mono version, thanks to Sam Wen, our, uh, our boss, uh, last uh, time we were here, I said, Sam, people want monochrome versions. And some months later, we got a test version. It works really, really well. Now, the first thing people are going to ask is, that's great, but what about filters? What, you know, what about speed of scopes? My experience is this is, a, this is a complex balance. It's a complex balance between aperture and a complex balance between um, speed of the scope. So. What I have found on F5, on a, my refractor on a Takahashi, I can get down to about 4.5 nanometers. If you've got a Raza, then definitely you could go faster. If you've got a slower scope, you may struggle. So it's gonna be about a little bit of a test. So what we could do beyond this? Well, right now we've got the Duo with the, the Guider internally, ASI Air externally. So we thought, why not bring the ASI Air inside the camera? So uh, this was not an April Fool's, this was real. The <laughs> April Fool's was on you guys, because we had so many people on social media going, ah, yeah, no, great, it's real. Come and have a look at it on the stand. So the ASI Air 2600MC Air is a duo camera, but in the back of it, when you turn it around, you will actually see a little hub. Um, there is a three outlet uh, DC port. There is one in, two out. Um, there is four USB-Cs and um, there is a uh, type C, which is actually used for storage. So this camera is slightly different in that it doesn't have a USB three out, um, but it is compact and it is integrated. Who would be this, who would, you know, the target audience for this? If you're new and don't have the other components or want a very, very compact um, setup, um, then this would be absolutely uh, suitable for you. The ASI Air is a, uh, a 256 gig uh, storage. You can still put a USB-C, uh, oh, sorry, USB um, uh, memory stick in there as well. 
And uh, you can still use um, DASCOM client over Wi-Fi. So you can still access the camera, still access the storage. So very, very integrated. We were setting up as a NIAC and uh, we put the power into it and we were like, okay, what's next? Nothing. <laughs> <Ooh. laughs> All we needed was a Wi-Fi connection to the mount and then, uh, you know, the only cable you would need right now would be for the focuser, the EAF, which actually needs a USB connection and uh, because it needs power. We're working on that. We're thinking about that. So that's the uh, 2600 uh, Air. I know that today we've had quite a lot of responses looking for, uh, for monochrome, so we'll have a think about that too. So this is looking really, really... <laughs> Where's all the cables gone? We're starting to lose more and more cables. So what we're looking to do is to try and integrate more to make devices smarter so that we can actually reduce cables as much as possible. The only thing we don't have right now is, um, you know, wireless power transfer. Yeah, who knows? If you're not familiar with ASI Air, ASI Air is a kind of integrated package. Um, it contains camera control, it contains mount control, guiding, um, it contains a polar alignment tool, so you basically can polar align from this. So if you have an AM5 and an ASI Air, you've got everything that you need to go out, set up, polar align, image for the evening, capture everything, and also the processing tools. You can quick stack with inside the ASI Air um, app as well. Um, it also does video mode as well, so if you're a planetary imager, you can also capture video from planetary as well. And um, you can set up plans and previews, etc., with inside the app. So depending on what your mode of operation is, then uh, ASI Air can probably suit what you want to do. Even if you're a quick snapper, um, you can um, set this up. Great live mode. If you're a do outreach, I use out, uh, live mode all the time. Set this up set it up on a target and then let people watch as the data rolls in and the picture builds up and they're, they're like but there's nothing there i can't see anything it's black well you know it's there look at this just a quick note we've just released a new uh, planetary camera as well which is 676 um square sensor um 3552 by 3552 um good well depth and uh, fast frame rate. It's a, just a slightly better sensor. And great for lunar and planetary image. If you want to come out and look at that, please, uh, please do. So the product line now is, when you come down onto the stand, somebody actually said to me this morning, she said, wow, when you were here in like 2019, you had a little table with just one or two cameras. Now we're able to offer you everything that you need for, as, a, as a kind of one-stop shop. We can offer you a mount, offer you guiding, we can offer you uh, cameras, we can offer you filter wheels, ASI Air, and, uh, and uh, even a telescope now. So just a quick reminder, we do do a whole range of uh, planetary cameras as well. We keep adding to this, we've got lots and lots of uh, deep sky cameras, cooled cameras, non-cooled. We've got something pretty much for every pri you know, price range. So we've got simple cameras, lower cost introductory cameras for newcomers all the way through to if you come come and have a look at the 461 that's on the table down there it's like wallpaper but has a corresponding wallpaper telescope price range so but come and have a look at it this is pretty impressive guide cameras uh we've uh, focusing now on the uh, 120 and the 174 uh, 120 is a kind of introductory camera. The 174 is something that you would use, for example, for an off-axis guider, the big chip, um, slightly higher price. The 220 is the little star of the show. That's the chip that we're using in the Duo as well. Very, very sensitive, good well depth, nice uh, pixel size. Actually, my go-to camera for guiding now, uh, whether it's on the Duo or standalone. And we're still doing the whole range of other uh, products as well. For example, the um, ever popular uh, EAF, the autofocuser. Um, if you don't autofocus, 
come and talk to us. This thing's like sliced bread. Once you've got one of these, you won't ever want to lose it. So for order focusing, what you, all you've got to do is uh, press a button and the, uh, the focuser will move and take an image. And um, for those who are not really familiar, if you've ever wrapped out a, a telescope on a star, when you're out of focus, it's you know huge and dim. As you get to focus, it's going to go tighter and tighter and tighter and brighter. And we measure this, you get a little graph, a little V-shape. And ASI Air will calculate this and move you to the focus position that you should be at. We've still got filter wheels, off-axis guiders, and, uh, and some uh, filters and distortion correction tools if you're a planetary imager. Come down and talk to us if you want to have a look at those as well. Must, must remember to mention, this is probably the most forgotten piece of software. This is ASI Studio. ASI Studio is a free tool on our website. You can come and download that for free. It includes uh, imaging for planets, deep sky, stacking, and it's got this little tool called Fitz File Viewer. How many people have downloaded a Fitz File and wanted to have a look? Go load this, it's great, because it's got this Fitz Viewer actually built in. Instead of going, oh, where do I find that tool for Fitz Viewer? Oh, yeah. Also got a mount control for AM5 and AM3, conversion for uh, in built-in, and uh, meteor recording. Who's got a planetary camera? It's a ZWO one with the little all sky lens. Put it on a tripod outside, run meteor uh, recording, and see how many meters you capture in an evening. Because uh, this is all built in. It's going to do some frames, look for meteors, and then record those to disk. And this is all free. It's for Linux, if that's your chosen flavor, Mac, and for Windows. So it's across multi platforms. It's really easy to use and uh, regularly updated. Well worth, uh, well worth looking. So uh, we talked about that. So what about the future? Well, we're going to keep developing products that you enjoy using, that we enjoy using, because we're active images. We're, we're out there enjoying the night sky too. We don't just develop products. Even the teams back in headquarters are going to be out there on the roof of their building in uh, Suzhou and actually imaging, testing the products that they're making, but also enjoying their own astro imaging as well. And um, we're going to continue developing those. There are some questions. I know there's some questions today and I'm going to head them off right. Where's the camera angle adjuster? We're working on it. I know we released it last year. Um, C Star has been insanely popular, right? But over the next three or four months, you should see some development work on this, and we will actually get to a point where we're, we're going to be able to release it. The hardware is done. I've been testing it, so is TJ. ASCOM is pretty much done. The integration into ASI Air is the piece that we're, we're going to be working on. So for us, we're going to keep building on what we've built over the last 10, 15 years. We're gonna keep going. We're gonna keep delivering products that you enjoy using. And uh, you'll see a lot more of ZWO, a lot more of C-Star um, over the next year. Okay, I think we've got some quick time for a You're gonna have to shout because I'm not gonna hear you from the noise behind here. <laughs> 